Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. I'm your host, Amir, joined today by Martel. You can find him at the Miami Heat Zone podcast. And we also have a, a guest joining us today. We have Matt Marine. Um, do you want to just give yourself or give the audience a quick uh, introduction? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here with, with the audience as well. Uh, it's, a, it's great to be here. My name is Matthew Morin. Uh, Matt, whatever's easier for, for everyone else. Um, I was born and raised in South Florida, raised a Heat fan. And um, I love everything about the Miami Heat, what they bring to the NBA, what they bring to the city. And um, I just want to give everybody the most insight that I can. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. So we know the the regular or the, the playoffs, the season just ended this week. Right. And there's a few things that will happen relatively soon for the Miami Heat. One, the draft next week. Two, free agency begins June 30th. The Miami Heat are going to need to focus on those two areas. The or not actually the draft the most. The, the free agency area, we're not going to be able to focus on too, too much because we're a first apron team. So right. we will still have to look for bargain bin opportunities and replacing players like Haywood Highsmith, possibly Kayla Martin, or even like a Thomas Bryant or Orlando Robinson, who might not be on the team next year as well. Um, but beyond that, the biggest thing, obviously, the biggest question facing the Miami Heat this summer is whether or not the Miami Heat are going to offer Jimmy Butler his extension for $113 million. Jimmy and Bernie Lee have made it clear that they want to stay with the Miami Heat specifically, but they want the max contract. doesn't seem like they're willing to budge or negotiate. Pat Riley also said, hey, we're not willing to offer that right now. We have plenty of time. We can even offer it next year, and that's most likely the approach we're going to take. So um, a new report or rumor came out um, from Matt Moore from the Action Network saying that the Miami Heat are actually just undecided in general if they're actually going to offer it. Um, so I wanted to get your opinion, Matt, just like on the whole saga. It can go in multiple ways. The Miami Heat can cave and just give it to him um, as a reward for obviously what he's done in this uh, past five seasons. Um, or they could possibly say, hey, we're going to wait and see. And then that could you know, make Jimmy disgruntled, right? Who knows? He could maybe request a trade. A lot can happen. What are your thoughts on the whole situation? And I guess, what is your preference? Do you want us to to give that extension or do you think we should trade Jimmy Butler? What are your thoughts on the whole scenario? For sure. Uh, great question. I mean, that's obviously the most impending thing in, in relation to the heat right now. You're right. Um, that's anybody. If anybody's talking about the heat nationally or locally, that's the first thing that comes up. So it's appropriate. I, I think that that Jimmy Butler and the Miami heat, has been a great marriage. It obviously hasn't resulted in a championship yet, or it may not ever. Hopefully it does. But um, there's a crossroads. There is definitely a decision that has to be made in terms of what direction the Heat want to take. Do they want to just give him the extension, like you said, and quote unquote cave? I think that's on the table. I think them finding a middle ground is on the table in regards to the extension. Obviously, you know, Jimmy knows that we're a first apron team. He may not know the ins and outs of that, but I think Jimmy's a, a team first guy when it comes to those hard conversations. Um, he's going to ask for what he wants, and, you know, him and Bernie Lee have already made that clear. But I think Bernie Lee, as well as Jimmy, has an utmost respect for the organization, and there's clearly a, a, a similarity in their mindsets, right? And I don't think Jimmy was thrown off by Pat's comments either. Um, some fans would even go far go as far as to say that Pat was right on point and it was necessary. Um, but I I don't think the trade is as likely as the other two pathways. I really think there's either going to be a middle ground found or they're going to they're going to just give him the full extension. Or they might even wait. They might even wait. And the Heat wouldn't be wrong to do that, I don't think necessarily, because their standpoint is well, we want more games out of our best player, but the other side of it is well. Jimmy was probably expecting more help roster standpoint wise, you know, as far as the Dame situation, but that's a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole other rabbit hole and we can go down that too. But I, I believe that they will find a middle ground. They will find something to, to, you know, advance with, but my preference is, is that Jimmy Butler is in a heat uniform. I don't want to see him anywhere else. Um, and that's just the fan in me speaking, but realistically, I, I don't see him wanting to play for anyone else. 
So, Matt, you mentioned, you know, the whole thing about Jimmy Butler not having help. You know, like, I just think that we don't really talk about Kyle Lowry enough and how much of a huge mistake that was. And we don't hold Jimmy Butler accountable to that at all because that was nope. that was his boy. And in right. year two, I don't know like, if you remember, but it was right before the um, trade deadline. He was at the podium and said, Kyle Lowry is not going anywhere. I think Kyle Lowry was – he was okay the first year. Okay, but Kyle Lowry came over here out of shape, overweight, and I know a lot of people are going to say, well, that was – well, he's always been that his whole career, but – he chose to go to the Miami Heat. He chose right. to come here. He could have went to all these other teams. Yeah, we gave him that third year, but he could have went anywhere he wanted. And if he had a problem with Pat Riley or the Miami Heat organization, so then why come here? So I just feel like when people say, well, they never got Jimmy Butler help. We had $90 million on our books over three years. And I think if we were able to at least get two high-level role players out of those three years each time, for the amount of money that we were paying Kyle Lowry, we probably could have won a championship. Because people don't realize that. Kyle Lowry took up $90 million, okay? And Jimmy Butler never held Kyle Lowry accountable compared to how he had, you know, Bam. He held Tyler. He, especially Duncan. He holds everybody else accountable. I just felt like we, we did get him help, but then at the same time, we didn't. But Jimmy was the one that was supposed to say, you know what, Kyle, you got to go. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Amir, you have something to add? No, I'll go for it. Not yet. I'll I'll go for it. Um, as far as as Kyle, as Kyle Lowry goes, going into that summer when we first signed him, I thought that was the the missing piece, and I think everyone did, including yeah. the front office. I thought that was the missing piece to the the vet presence that we needed in the playoffs, just that last bit mm-hmm. left. And I think the Heat were expecting Toronto Kyle Lowry, and he never showed up. Um, but that's not to take away from what he did in a Heat uniform. I think Kyle Lowry did good enough in a heat uniform, but I don't think that's what they signed him for. And nor did the dollars reflect that on the contract. So all parties involved, it's probably one that's a little regretted, but at the end of the day, I think the intentions of the heat were to try to get that last piece and it just didn't work out for him. And as far as him holding uh, Kyle accountable, I, I, I do agree with that. I think there were times on the podium where he not singled out other players, but didn't really, talk about Lowry as the, in the fashion that he talked about others. So I, I do see what you're saying there. Definitely Lowry towards the end was um, what's the word that we can come up with here. It, it just was kind of overwhelming towards the end. That was something that was in the works. So Kyle Lowry, I think was a very, a very regrettable deal and not something that happens with the heat often, to be honest with you. And then when you mentioned Jimmy Butler, I mean, whether we get a guy like Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, whoever that star is, or or even if we get maybe two or three high-level role players to put around Bam and Jimmy, do you think that Jimmy Butler has enough left in the tank? Because I don't need him playing 82 games. It's just that if he's going to give us 65 games, can he at least try in the games that he plays? Because I think especially this season that we've seen, mind you, we gave him the $150 million max deal. Well, I think that we've been pretty good at Jimmy Butler. We allowed Jimmy Butler to do things that Braun, D. Wade, and Bosch could not do. You see what I'm saying? So I just think that in terms of, I don't need him to play 82, but especially this season, how especially coming down to the wire, the Indiana game, the New York Knicks game, there was multiple games where if, if he would have just tried, we would have been out of the playing tournament. So do you really think that Jimmy Butler has enough left in the tank going forward for these next two, three years, per se, to at least be competitive enough so that we're not in the playing tournament? Because... We need our best player no matter who we get. Every team across the NBA, their best player is playing the games. Right. I, I, I think he does, but I think what needs to happen is, is he needs to go from the first option to the second or the third. I think that's what needs to happen. I, think, I don't think Jimmy Butler in a Heat uniform is over. What I think is over is him trying to be 1A when he's not truly a 1A. I mean, so he, then how he, are we going to pay him as such? And how does Jimmy expect that? Because he can't say that he never where got I his think, money. That's where I think if I was a betting man, that's where yeah. I think the middle ground comes in. That's that To me, that's always been the most likely pathway. But the two most realistic ones are them either paying that extension, like you said, and paying him like that 1A and saying, hey, you got us to the finals twice, even though there's already been an extension after the first finals appearance. He got us there again when nobody expected it. Obviously, it wasn't all him, but there were some moments where it was just another gear that the opponent didn't even expect. So it would be us giving him that money in light of that. But 
it's a tough game to play when you're when you're paying someone for what they did and not what they're going to do, right? So that's where the Heat have to split some hairs and and figure out a way to make everyone happy. And Jimmy may have to come down on his price a little bit more for them to actually make a true run at a championship with someone else alongside them. And by them, I mean Bimmy, uh, Bimmy, excuse me, Bam and Jimmy, right? They need another running mate. I think they need a a true consistent scoring option, a third person, you know, I, I think it's, there's always a wall that they run into offensively that Caleb Martin or any of these other role player type guys, they can't answer the call every single time. You know, we were hoping that would be Terry Rogier. Yes. Until he got hurt this year, you know, like we knew he, he wasn't going to average 23 or 24, like he did no, on the Hornets, obviously. He needed the 17, 18, and, and some timely assists. That's all we needed. But that's sports, right? You know, sometimes things don't work out. He doesn't even get to play in the play-in game, and that was supposed to be our, our missing little, you know, X factor. Um, it's unfortunate. But I think, you know, Terry, someone you could use in a, in a trade. And if not, if you're able to keep him somehow, that's another guy that's that's capable off the bench or even in a starting role. He's He's, he's shown us he can do both. Yeah, it's hard to imagine either him or Tyler going to be willing to. I think I think Terry might be more willing. Yes. Um, just because I mean he is a little yeah, bit older, and obviously, yeah, he wants to win a championship. Tyler's kind of probably has a bigger ego. I mean, I'm, everybody has an ego if you're an NBA player, obviously. Right, but right, I it just sucks that we didn't get to see that no. team fully healthy because we knew initially Terry was you know trying to assimilate was playing a little more off ball. Wasn't really playing aggressive like the Miami heat needed, which is a true, he's not going to be the one a, but like on that team, no. he can be the one a scorer, like shot chucker, especially if Tyler hero is hurt and injured. Right. So yeah. And I, I preferred, is, I preferred him to hero in that, in that instance as well, you know, just straight up pure scorer. I, I right now I'd probably take, I'd probably take Terry fully healthy, but it just yep. didn't, we didn't get to see the full rendition of this team healthy. And that's unfortunate, but it's also kind of a sign to the front office, you know, maybe it's time to shake things up a little bit, get some new blood in there. Um, maybe you can swing big and get a Donovan or a Trey like we, like we alluded to before. And you don't know what's on the other side of that. Maybe this team needs its core pieces back, but the supporting cast needs to be a little different. Yeah. Let me ask you this too. So availability injuries were the, the biggest issue with the Miami heat, but there were windows and there were small pockets where we were all healthy. Tyler did get to play a little bit with Terry. And I think the biggest issue with this Miami heat team is just fit across the board. Like Tyler yeah. just doesn't fit necessarily next to Jimmy more. So I think he could, we could build around him and bam, but Tyler's going to have to be that third or fourth guy. Still. I don't think yeah. Tyler's going to be a number two. If we trade Jimmy Butler, which I don't think we, we would, and I don't want to, but Right now, it's about fit. We don't have the best fit because Tyler and Terry seem redundant. They're both like... Right. They cancel similar. each other out in a way. Yes. They cancel each other out because they're not good enough defensively. They get kind of hunted. Um, Tyler's bigger and taller, I guess, but still undersized guards that are not two-way players. Right. So, and, and you, you can't have them on the floor at the same time. Um, I mean, Terry provides more rim pressure. Um, like you said, they both kind of they both kind of have their moments on defense where it's not pretty. But in a, in a game where you're in a shootout, you know you'd rather have Terry. But not every game's going to play out like that. So you need you need more uh, more of a defensive uh, presence on the outside than those two provide. And maybe you have to say goodbye to one of them for that to happen. Or you know, Andy Ellisberg is going to have to break out that calculator and figure something out. So um, we'll see. I think, what do you guys think, if one of them were to be moved, which one do you think would be moved first? Tyler. What do you For think, sure Martel? Tyler Hero. For sure, Tyler Hero. Yeah, I think so, too. Because of his contract. So Terry is making, he's only like, has what, two more years, I think, on the contract, or three max? Yeah. Tyler has like four or it's five that more same years. that Charlotte gave him, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's making yeah. 24 or something next year. Tyler's making 30. So I think based on the contract, based on just the fit, essentially, for keeping Jimmy and Bam as our top two, then you want to just test out how Terry Rozier can fit in. Because, again, Terry, Bam, and Jimmy probably played, like, 30 games together. So um, what do you yeah. think? Uh, between the two, like, and also, 
who would you rather have? And we mentioned Donovan Mitchell. We mentioned uh, Trey. We've there's Brandon Ingram. Just today was you know rumored that he's that there are rumors that they were going to shop him, and it seems like they are indeed shopping him around. It's very unlikely to get those type of players. So um, we're going to have to make marginal moves, and right, and then that likelihood we got to trade one of those two, or even a Duncan Robinson, the guys that actually make significant amount of money to get a good type of player in return. So who would you prefer to be on the roster next season? I would say, you know, there's, there's obviously if, the, if there's an opportunity to get someone like Donovan or, or Trey, you're going to have to say goodbye, you know, to some that you may not want to. Um, and that's part of that when you're acquiring a, a level of talent that high, you got to say goodbye to something. And that, that was always a discussion point when we were in the talks for Dame, right? You know, you got to say bye to something. You, you can't just fleece the other team every single time. Um, maybe in the mid nineties, I think that that's what Pat was doing all the time, but nowadays it's a little, you know, the, the playing field's a little different. There's a lot of variables that go into that. I would say, um, Duncan did well for his worth a- across the league last year. I think in totality, there were some, some dips obviously, but I think people always, people know what he brings in the playoffs too. He's, he's a, He's a, a three-point shooter. He is a sniper. He can he can get hot. He can get going. He's shown marginal improvements on defense and really a guy that can cut to the basket now, a guy that can play a two-man game. He's not just a spot-up shooter anymore. So I think I don't want to see Duncan Robinson go, but I think he is a under underrated chess piece that we have. I, I think a lot of GMs would, would happily pick up the phone just to think about that guy. So I think... If you ask me, honestly, I, I really think the first piece that's going to fall is is the extension, whether it's like a middle ground, like I've said before, or a full on, you know, max. And then after that, there's going to be something we're going to know more about Mitchell. I think that's the number one guy on the board for the Heat and for the fans, too. Um, the fact that he hasn't signed that extension yet is is not telling, but it is a hint at the very least. I'd say you got to look into it. No. Yeah, that's a good point. So, Martel, let's let's transition real quick because again, we're six days away from the NBA draft. The Miami Heat have two draft picks this year, which is super rare. We haven't had a second round pick wow. in like four seasons, and I mean, it's very hard to hit in the second round. But some teams do get really lucky, and I mean, we got Jay Rich um, in the second round seven years ago or eight years ago, whatever it was, and he at one point was our leading scorer. Um, on a team with like James Johnson and um, Tyler, Tyler Johnson, Johnson and Dion and those guys, like, um, so who knows? We can Kelly maybe o. hit there. Kelly O, yeah. So, um, but let's not focus on the second pick. Let's focus on the the first pick and the fifteenth spot. Um, the Miami Heat have holes in this roster. We need a backup point guard. We need possibly wings once Caleb or Haywood go to other teams. And then, of course, I mentioned earlier. We have like Thomas Bryan, Orlando Robinson as our backup centers. And Kevin Love technically has been the backup to Bam, which ideally I would prefer him to be the backup to Jovic. If Jovic is going to be starting, put him back to his natural position. So there's three areas that we really need. What's your preference for this team? What team, what should they focus on? And like, who would you want to pick in that position? Tristan De Silva, for sure. You know, he's a 6A guy. He's a senior. So he's kind of like Jaime. Yes, he's an older rookie, but... If we want, you know, win now players, and I think he's he's almost like Jaime in terms of he's a great two way player. You know, he you know he's a senior. He'll be able to help this Miami Heat roster right now. And I think with his switchability, his versatility, his defense, that's exactly what this you know Miami Heat team need. We need athleticism. We got you know we need guys that can play you know multiple positions, but then not only just do the same thing. So I think Tristan De Silva is a very safe pick for right now because I know we want Devin Carter and Khalil Ware, but I just think. For for someone to check all the boxes, I think that Tristan De Silva, he's a very well-rounded player. Yeah, I agree. Same to you, Matt. What, you took, what would you, you think? To, believe it or not, man, you took my pick from me. That guy is exactly what, you know, the modern NBA, that's what teams are leaning towards now. If you look around the, re- around the league, you know, you have Nas Reed, you have P.J. Washington, you have these guys that have a lot of switchability and versatility, but they show ability to score. And the ability to move the ball, all the things you need to win playoff games. And, you know, that's what the Heat do. That's what we want to do. Um, we need to get bigger. We need to get longer. Um, there's a lot of moments in big games in the past couple of years where everyone can look at it and just say, we are too small. 
and that's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, but that's where the, the draft is somewhere you can address that. Uh, you can address that through trades, but I think with this pick, they need to focus on size, the first pick. Um, if that, if that, if he's not there, I would say um, a lot of people have been looking at at Tyler Kolick. I know he can play some point guard. Um, he's out of Marquette too, and he's like a TJ McConnell type, very grinded out po- type of point guard. Um, kind of reminds me. I know it's it's funny because he played for us, but it, he kind of reminds me of Dragic too. Very crafty in the lane, and he's able to find space and really kind of take over games from a scoring standpoint too. Um, just an overall really good basketball player. If if we had to pivot to point guard in, in the with the first pick, I would I would keep an eye on on Kolik as well. And we did work him out, if, to my understanding. I, if Greg Sylvander reported that over at Five Reasons. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I I, I don't want to focus so much on the point guard spot because again, crowded backcourt, and we have two combo cards essentially um, on our here. roster, right? So like, if if for some reason we do convince Tyler to come off the bench or convince Terry to come off the bench and bring Duncan into the starting lineup, which would be a better fit next to Jimmy Bam, um, obviously because of the gravity um, and then his ability to put the ball on the floor. Now you mentioned he's improved um, not only on the cutting aspect, but he had that Steve Smith shimmy on um, was it Osser or Amen Thompson against the, against the Pistons and against Wemby. He had like a he nice did little... it against Wemby. I think he did it in the playoffs too, if I'm not mistaken. On Jalen Brown, I think. I think, I he, think I th- he did. He did it in the playoffs. Like the one game, one game that we won. Uh, that was a good moment. That one kind of got lost in the in the archives there, but I remember that one too. Yeah, I mean, he and Jalen Brown, like, don't love the guy because I hate all the Boston Celtics, but like his defense was spectacular in the playoffs. So really good defensive player, and then so is either I forgot it was a Osser, I think is on the um, Amen's on the uh, the Rockets. So Osser Thompson, right. like. Really good defender as a rookie. And then, of course, Wemby, top three in defensive player of the year. So, um, but yeah, so I don't think I want a backcourt um, player from the draft. I, I think I would take that risk on um, Tristan if he's available. I know there's the Lakers and Memphis and other teams are, are scouting him, so he might not be on the board. Um, but like a Kalel Ware, I think. I think it's just harder to find big men across the league, yes. obviously. Um, so I think we take that risk as long as he could be a, um, rotational player. Cause Kevin Love, again, is only getting older. Like he's 35. Yes. Um, there's, yeah. He can only put it together for, for so many games at a time. And there's, there's stretches where it looks very labored. Exactly. So we're going to be super spread thin on our bench. It's going to be just mainly bam, Jokic and love who are essentially going to be playable, right? Because Thomas Bryant was getting tons of DMPs. Same with Orlando Robinson. You know um, what else? That, that this came out today, but Milwaukee's looking to yep. kind of change up their their approach defensively, and that may leave Brooke Lopez as an odd man out. And, you know, I I can't stand watching Brooke Lopez as an opponent, but I I would take him. I would I would absolutely at least look at him if I were the Heat because that, that kind of addresses two of the problems you have. In terms of the front court, which is you know rebounding, you know behind Bam because we need someone to come in and rebound consistently when Bam's not. And if you get every game the past or most Heat games, the past four to five years, when the backup center comes in, it it is a massive drop off in terms of boxing out, in terms of getting rebounds, and it's just we have to address that finally for once. And I think that could be a nice that could be a nice pivot foot pivot move. Honestly, it could be. Yeah, I don't know what his contract looks like. It would have to be through trade. No, I haven't obviously. looked that much into it, but it, it. Funny enough, Austin tweeted it. He said that's that that could be something we'd look at. I would love it. Um, I mean, I don't understand how Milwaukee's saying let's go in a different direction defensively when he had two point four blocks. He was defensive All NBA the last two. Don't know three either. I don't know how he's the scapegoat, but hey, if they want to offer him up, that's fine. He is. 35 so mobility is that issue obviously he's a good rim protector but he's not going to help on the perimeter but i'm a i'm from fresno i grew up from fresno he grew up in fresno so i've played with him um and his mom was my high school math teacher so i'm a big lopez bros fan so like i would definitely love that because his nickname was splash mountain right so he transitioned from a back to the basket type player 20 and 10 guy to a guy that could shoot you know 36 38 percent 
on high volume. So I think you'd be a good fit next to Bam. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Martel? And we'll close out after your thoughts. He's a solid big man. It's just how are they going to make it work and who are we going to trade? I just don't see Milwaukee making a trade with one of their rivals to potentially even get better. That that you know, so that that's where I see the confusion there. I yeah, I mean Milwaukee, I mean if they're if they're looking to to change their whole entire defensive approach and they feel like he's someone that's dragging down their defense and I know he averaged 2.4 blocks at so did Gobert and Gobert got attacked in the conference finals. Not, and I, I know he averaged more blocks than that, but then as you could be a great shot blocker and get hunted defense. I know it sounds crazy that I'm asking the Heat to bring him in, but I think Spo could, could absolutely get more out of him, even closer to the perimeter on defense. Uh, I I know I sound like a little bit of a homer here, but I trust I trust Spolster to get something more than other coaches, you know? So maybe if there's a way for the salaries to match and we could send something that's not such a big price tag and Milwaukee's willing to listen, you know, it's a conversation that could be had. It's a conversation that could be had. Yeah. I'm sure he's making like in the twenties or something, nothing, nothing too crazy. I mean, that could be Terry Rozier for him. Keep, if we want to keep Tyler for some reason, maybe we could do uh, that. But it's, Yeah. Why? Well, I, I don't see. know about that one. <laughs> we'll no? have to see how it shakes out. I don't, I don't know if I'd give up Terry for him, but if there's another way to figure it out, this is, it was just an idea. It was something I saw on the timeline and it yeah, yeah. haven't it's thought too. too deeply into it clearly, but it's, it's a guy that can shoot from the corners. He can shoot from the outside. He is a presence on the inside. And yes, if you get him, if you get him on an Island on the perimeter defensively, that's probably not going to go well, but hopefully we can avoid those situations if he wasn't a heat uniform. Yeah. And he's actually, the salaries would match like, perfectly almost really? he's average, yeah he signed a two-year 48 million dollar deal so he has 23 um million dollars next year terry's 25 so yeah, i was we just could, pulling up sport track here yep so if we can if we could do that straight up which i don't think we would do necessarily but still yeah. if we did that straight up we would get two million dollars off the books maybe we can use that to pay haywood highsmith the mid-level plus two million i don't know just thinking but, out loud but here. here's the real are you ready to watch terry rozier hit seven threes in december on us that's the real question and and seven from dame so that's 14 <laughs> right there we saw dame cook in the playoffs then they would have a backward problem too no they would have to figure out how dame and terry work and they were talking that would crap. Be terrible and they're martel they were talking martel they're talking crap about are saying they, they need some defensive changes. Let's get rid of Lopez. You already made that decision when you got Dame and get, got rid of Drew Holiday, now two time NBA champion, right there. Right? I think that's you the you can't say you want defense now and, and you made that trade. That they made that bed, they have to lie in it. That's as that's that's what I think about Milwaukee. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for joining the podcast today. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Before we hop off, do you want to let the audience know where they can find you? Absolutely. You can find me there, right right there on Twitter and more in FIU. Um, I'm going to be changing that at somewhat soon. Uh, I'm graduating from there soon, but um, you can come over to my Twitter anytime. I'll be starting my own show soon. I'll be happy to invite you guys on we'll, and I'll come on here, however you guys want to do it. But it was great to be here. Uh, great to talk to you guys. And um, I'm looking forward to the next one. Thanks again. Martel, any closing words? Like, share, comment, subscribe, and thank you for all the support. And once again, make sure that you guys go over to Matt's Twitter and go follow him.